Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of The Casting Chamber. Getting yourself in order. Now, before we go into the title and what we're going to talk about today, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who in the first episode of the YouTube comments or the Reddit post or even DMing me on Twitter came forward, introduced themselves and talked about their goals. That was exceptional. It's great to see the passion in the community. It's great to see everyone coming together and even people already collaborating. Uh, I've seen a couple of casters come forward and say, hey, I work with this league. DM me anyone if you want to get involved in cast. That's so awesome. That's another part of this project where we will do an episode on collaborating, casting with new casters, learning new styles, and so on and so forth. Uh, another thing as well, if anyone hasn't already seen, we are on Spotify. We being me, uh, the casting chamber is now on Spotify. So you can check out all the episodes there. Hello to the new Spotify audience. And for anyone on YouTube who can see how scruffy and how, I guess, like, traveling musician I look, well, enjoy that. That's your own little slice of isolation. Uh, sometimes as a caster, you think you know what you're saying, but you really don't. Maybe we'll talk about that as well. Let's get into episode two, getting yourself in order. The reason I wanted to go into this first before we get into the technicalities, the fundamentals, the voice work, VOD reviews, etc, etc, that a lot of you guys out there will know is this is something really important to me and should be important to you as well. This is making sure your mind is in the right place to start off or continue this casting journey slash passion slash career. This is the most important thing to cover and we're going to start with point number one of this. Being humble. You have to know where you stand. You have to know what you are. You are a talent member working for a broadcast, a product, an employer, a contractor, etc. That's what you are. Whether you're fresh or intermediate, know your skill level and do not think you are better than you are. Be humble. Know that you are learning if you're learning. Know that you have some skill, but you still have a long way to go. I know doing LPL and finals, you know, uh, not final specifically, but just LPL. I have a long way to go. This is what I need to tune up. Okay, I'm good at what I do, but I could be so much better. I need to be humble. I can be... Th there's a very big difference between, you know, egotistic and uh, self-driven, self-motivated, uh, self... What's the word I'm looking for? Self-assured. <laughs> Excuse me. Self-assured. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, this is a big problem with newer casters though. They think they're top shit. They have an ego when they shouldn't. I have come across many who think they're better than they are. You need to know where you stand. I wanted to start this, off this series making sure people understand that if you come off as arrogant or don't own your weaknesses or your mistakes, you will lose the respect of people around you. As well as being seen poorly by contractors or employers that you rely on for your work or that you want to rely on in the future. Your reputation will be shattered before you can even get your foot in the door. And moving straight into part two, this is this kind of joins together, is you want to be a pleasure to work with. Part of that lack of ego and knowing your weaknesses and being humble makes you that pleasure to work with. You don't want people complaining and dragging your name through the mud because you're difficult to speak to or you're not approachable, or that ego's in your head, and you're rude enough, and people just don't want to deal with you. And a lot of the time, this is something I, I've, again, seen in, in Rising Talent, where you think, what employer is going to bring you back when they hear you don't get along with your co-casters or the production team, or that there's a problem and you come off as arrogant, and people go, I don't want to work with this person. What if you have a caster who's the mainstay on a broadcast saying, I don't want to work with this person. They've got an ego, they're arrogant, they're not working. They're... This, is, this is pointless. Why don't we get someone else? Has happened. It's a team environment. Most casting gigs and jobs are team environments and you have to spend a large amount of time with these people. And it comes back to ego and what I said about being humble. It doesn't matter how good you are, if people just don't want to work with you. I know employers who have hired casters with lesser skill purely just because they're easy to work with. Put yourself in that scenario. You put two people, you line them up, maybe one has lesser skill. And then let's say you, with, with an ego, you're hard to work with. Just because you have more skill doesn't mean someone's going to go, oh, we get this person for sure. We get this person for sure. 
employers, especially around beginner, intermediate, even like better casting levels, they want people that are good to work with. That is such a big job requirement. And trust me, it is important. You're working in a team environment. Anyone who now works in an office or in a kitchen, or I think kitchen's the best example, really. If you can't work in a team environment, they don't care how fucking good you are as a chef. You're out. You're out. For casters, it is more or less the same. Something important to keep in mind. Our final point of that, at that as well is about gaining respect. Make sure when you enter a, a building or production, and I'm going to feel like your mother or your father right now telling you about manners, you make sure that you greet the employer. You greet the boss if they're available. You go and you say, hello, how are you? Shake their hands, you know, look them in the eyes, smile, be pleasant. I was discussing this on Twitter and Reddit the other day. Uh, this career is a lot about the connections you make and maintain. This means complimenting people like your co-caster, you know, the production team, you know, building up a relationship and giving honest feedback, caring about the broadcast you're on, getting involved. There are so many different parts of this. It is super important to remember that people will remember you if you're friendly, if you're polite, if you're great to work with. Also, a nice little point is that, if, if, to remember this, there is a fine line between showing respect and care to maybe schmoozing and sucking up for the sake of it. So, don't overdo it, be professional, and don't cross boundaries and be annoying. You don't want that. For example, say hello, goodbye, uh, maybe ask how someone is. Uh, these are, you know, colleagues and employers, not your best friends having relationship trouble. You want to create a nice, not barrier, but you want to make sure there's a nice line between being friendly and positive and being great to work with and trying to be friends with people who maybe don't feel the same way. Maybe they're just part of production. And they're like, well, we, you know, it's great working with this person, but we're not going any further. People will remember you. And not only that, if you listen to the points before where you make sure you show respect, you're not arrogant, you're humble and you know where you stand and you're focused on improving They'll remember you. They'll bring you back for more gigs. And they'll refer you to other people. I, I remember uh, from, from some of my experience, I was working with ESL Australia. And this was actually one of my focuses. I thought the team was really nice and I wanted to make sure they brought me back. One of the first gigs I worked with them on uh, was either Rocket League or no, I did Oceanic Challenger Series when it got picked up by them in, in 2016. Oceanic Challenger Series underneath the OPL, if anyone doesn't know. And I would do a gig for them. And I was very happy. I was thankful. You know, I went and talked to the boss. I went and talked to the production team. Good job, guys. Really good job. Um, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. And months later, I got a gig. You know, I came on for a bit of Rocket League. And then months later, the world of tanks for the first time. I don't even cast it. They're like, hey, this is our network of casters. Hysterics is in there because he's good to work with. He's nice to work with. And, you know, while I'm not trying to <laughs> show ego here, ironically, I'm confident that I am nice to work with, especially like back in those days, I was very nice to work with because I worked on it. It's so important. I got more gigs. I got more money. I worked with many different casters because I focused on how I was to work with and my input and my interest in their broadcast and their company. Don't forget to show interest. Don't forget to show that respect and be humble. This is something we had to cover now before we go into the technicalities. You can look at the casting fine elements, you can get as good as you want to get, but if you're a pain in the ass to work with, if you are not humble, if you do not show respect, if you do not gain that respect and be a pleasure to work with, forget your jobs, forget your casting career. No one will hire you because word of mouth is everything. This industry, word of mouth is everything. Don't buy yourself from getting gigs because something of something you can control, right? Word will spread and... You won't even get out that door. Don't underestimate the word of mouth and how far it will travel. It's important. Also, on top of this, on top of everything we've just covered, don't show up to a gig un underprepared. That's another part of not showing respect, in my opinion, is that if you show up unprepared for a broadcast, 
you're spitting in the broadcast face you're spitting in the employer's face really really big element to take away so those are the three important points i hope you take this away and i hope everyone's sitting here right now quite humbled themselves at the journey they're going to take because if you're not if you think you're better than you are slap of reality is going to hurt and for some people it doesn't wake them up important topic to cover thank you ladies and gentlemen for your time next episode we're going to be going into voice and we're going to be talking a lot about the voice exercises how important it is how to use it properly from my experience and how good you'll sound afterwards ladies and gentlemen this has been the casting chamber for episode two it has been a pleasure once again if you're on youtube you know i'm going to ask you to like and subscribe and all that good stuff if anyone else is on Spotify, I don't know if you can subscribe on that. I don't think you can, but it's been an absolute pleasure again. Thank you for the response from the community. Great to see the passion. Great to see the casters of, you know, the next couple of years potentially showing up here. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it and I'll see you for episode three.